This is Scott Lasaf, host of the Sporting Chef on Sportsman Channel. And this is my go-to recipe for convincing those folks who are a little apprehensive about eating wild game that it is actually some of the best tasting meat around. If you happen to have a well-stocked freezer, I hope you'll give it a try. The biggest mistake that people make when cooking pretty much any antlered game, the better cuts of antlered game, is to overcook it. If you take a piece of deer steak and you cut it in half and you cook half of it medium well, half of it medium rare, it's two completely different pieces of meat. The medium well part is going to be chewier, more gamey tasting. The medium rare is very neutral in flavor and moist and tender. The same recipe works just great. Whether you've got a deer or a duck breast or a goose breast or an antelope, it's a venison with balsamic berry sauce. But first, I know that the back strap and the tenderloin of an antlered animal are the first to go. The back strap is that part along the back, the outside of the back, not to be confused with the tenderloin, which is on a little flat muscle on both sides of the inside of the cavity. But everybody likes the back straps because they're tender. This is actually the filet mignon of a deer. If you take the hindquarter muscles and cook them like you would a properly prepared backstrap, it's every bit as good. But there's a couple of things you can do to make sure that it's every bit as tender as a backstrap. First of all, you want to trim any of the silver skin off these hindquarter muscles. Um, don't leave the bone in. On the silver skin, your body doesn't process it. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't smell good. There's three good reasons not to eat, eat that sinew. And by the way, a bone-in deer steak isn't going to help the flavor at all. It actually detracts from the flavor and makes it taste worse. So I have a piece of the hindquarter. It's very well trimmed. The grain's running this way. It's perfectly fine just like it is as long as you don't overcook it. But I've got this little gizmo that I found called a jacquard. And it has 45 little stainless steel blades. And what this does is it cuts through the connective tissue of a tougher cut of meat. It's great for goose breasts also, for those big Canada goose breasts. And you just basically plunge it into this hindquarter muscle here. And it doesn't change the texture of the meat. It doesn't turn it into cube steak. But what it does do, you can tell there's just a couple of little punctures here and it's going to make it more tender. I know you've been told that you shouldn't poke holes in your meat because it lets all the juices escape. That's not true either. Another misconception is that you sear meat on the outside and that seals in the juices and makes it more tender. That's not true either. Searing meat on the outside makes it taste better, but it doesn't seal in any juices. So I'm going to get a couple of six ounce steaks here and head over over to the cast iron skillet. Now, this meat has been sitting out for about 10, 15 minutes because I want it to be more room temperature than chilled before I put it in the pan or stick it on a grill. Any piece of meat, whether it's deer, tri-tip, don't care, London broil, leave it out for 10, 15 minutes to let it get closer to room temperature before you put it on heat. And then when it comes off the heat, let it rest for a few minutes. As meat cooks, all the proteins, all the meat juices go to the coldest part of the meat, which if it comes right out of the refrigerator, that's going to be right in the center. So you've got all these juices concentrated in the center. And if you just take it just right off the heat and cut through it and stick it on somebody's plate, all the juice runs out. And that's where we lose a lot of people on this rare to medium rare thing. Do not overcook your deer. Let me season it with salt and pepper on both sides. The skillet is hot. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil first. Get that meat in quick. Once you put the meat in the skillet, if you just kind of give it a little bit of a scooch right when you first put it in there, it'll be less likely to stick when it's, uh, as it's cooking. And if your meat does stick to the pan or to the grill, don't try and force it up. Just give it a few minutes. As it sears on the outside, it'll lift right off and you can flip it off. Um, don't play with it a whole bunch. I'm going to brown it on one side, flip it over, brown the other side, and then start on that balsamic berry sauce. 
When you add herbs to a recipe, if you have a hearty herb like this rosemary here, you want to add it early on in the cooking process to release the oils. The more delicate herbs like basil, parsley, cilantro, add it at the very end of the cooking process um, because otherwise you'll just basically cook all the flavor out. So, fresh rosemary. I've got a little garlic that I'm going to add all to it also, but if I add the garlic right now, what I'm going to have is burnt garlic. Burnt garlic tastes bad. It tastes very bitter. That piece is looking good. Now let's just talk for a second about this whole rare to medium rare, don't overcook it thing. If you grew up eating well done steaks, and well, that's just the way we always ate it when I grew up. If you're a meat and potatoes person, I get it. I'm not asking you to change the rest of your life. What I'm asking you to do is to take 15 seconds out of your life and just try, I mean, just try a piece of rare to medium rare cooked venison. You'll find that it's not gamey, livery, muttony at all. What a lot of people do is they try and cook the gamey flavors out of their game. They'll marinate it for 48 hours, cut it into little strips, see if this sounds familiar. Wrap it in jalapeno and bacon. I know you know what I'm talking about. Bacon pretty much makes everything taste better. But a victory doesn't happen when you make deer not taste like deer. Deer itself is really, really mild. It's great flavor. I'm going to add a splash of good red wine. And I know that you've heard that you shouldn't cook with a wine that you wouldn't drink. This happens to be a wine that I would drink all the time, but it's actually a leftover bottle of wine. Don't cook with bad wine. But a lot of restaurants in a lot of parts of the country cook with wine out of a 18 liter box. Burgundy Chablis, it's neutral flavored wine. I say spend your money on the good wine that you're gonna drink, save your money and get a neutral unflavored wine on the wine that you're gonna cook with. That's a hot skillet, so that's gonna keep reducing. This is balsamic vinegar. This is a cheap balsamic vinegar. This is gonna be the sour flavor. And this, these steaks are just about cooked. Believe it or not, it goes that fast. To balance the acidic, uh, sour flavor of the balsamic vinegar, I just have some berry preserves. This was anything that's in the refrigerator door works out great. Open the door if you've got, if all you have is grape jelly, that works fine, or a little bit of sugar. It's sweet and sour flavors. So how do you tell when the meat is done? Best indicator is a meat thermometer. Spend five or six bucks for a meat thermometer at the grocery store. 130 to 135 degrees is the proper internal temperature for rare to medium rare. Some people use body parts. They say, well, that's rare, that's medium rare, that's well done. I find that a little bit confusing because I always forget what body part to use to determine doneness. Meat thermometer is best. People that are used to cooking meat in a kitchen push down on the meat. This meat is starting to spring back. When you get a raw piece of meat, you push down on it, it stays indented. Um, as it cooks, it springs back up. You know what, your better steak restaurants, they're not cutting holes into your steak and looking inside and saying, I've got a medium rare for table six. They push down on it either with a finger or tongue. And this one, this meat is ready to go. I'm gonna let it rest for a few minutes. So play with your food a little bit. Garlic. Butter. And I'm going to turn the heat off and whisk this butter in. And as the butter melts, it's going to create a nice sauce. And the butter takes the edge off the vinegar. Um, it balances the sauce out. One of the differences between restaurant sauces and home sauces is restaurants tend to use more heavy cream and more butter. And at home, most of the time, we eat chicken. There's fresh blackberries. If you don't have fresh berries, you can use frozen berries. Let me cut inside here and show you. This piece is going to be more on the rare side. Oh, that is just beautiful right there. That is a pretty piece of venison. Now, I understand some of you are looking at this meat thinking, my goodness, that's raw. Once again, just take a minute out of your life, 15 seconds out of your life, and try it this way. What's the worst thing that could happen?
and a little rosemary for color. Now, really, wouldn't you eat that? As the executive chef for Sportsman Channel's Hunt Fish Feed Program, I've seen what a positive impact the outdoor community can have on our nation's homeless and hungry. If you hunt or fish, get in touch with your local food bank, shelter, or community outreach center and see if they can use a donation of your harvested and processed fish and game.